All right, gang, Halex here. Tonight we're going to be doing the uh, Anakin Starkiller tutorial on how to assemble your Darth Maul lightsaber from him. So there's a few things you're going to need. So let's crack to the list. Okay, so first off, you're going to need a piece of threaded rod, 3 8 by 16, over 20 inches long. You can grab this at Lowe's in three foot section for just a couple bucks. You're also going to need a 3 8 washer. You can see in the video, I picked up three of them, and I end up going with this nylon washer with the part number linked below. Um, other members have used a rubber washer, and if I could have found one that was 3 8 I would have grabbed the rubber washer because I think that is ideal for this build. But my nylon one works just fine for me. Another thing I grabbed was two 3 8 by 16 nuts. These I use to cre create an edge to cut the threaded rod nice and straight. And speaking of cutting, you're going to need some kind of hacksaw. You can cut it with this, but it would take you a month of Sunday, so you'll see how I cut it in the uh, video. Once you're done cutting, you're going to need some way to deburr it. So you can use some sandpaper. If you have a table um, sander, you can use a table sander. Or this cheap tool that I grabbed off Amazon. You can grab off Amazon for $9 to deburr it. To get the O-rings on is a little bit of a chore, so some people have suggested, Dan has suggested th um, thread, but um, I've had no luck with sewing thread, I keep popping it. So others have used ribbons or um, very thin cable to pull the O-ring over. I used fish and line. And that pretty much sums up, oh, and an option, you'll see later on, I do end up using a half inch drill bit. So that pretty much sums up. What you're going to need, of course, some kind of glue adhesive to glue the end plug bung in. So with that said, that's our list of materials and tools. So let's crack over to the video, grab your shoes and your raincoat because we're going to Lowe's. All right, so we're at my favorite store. We got a small list of stuff to get. Let's go. Three eights, three eights, three eights, three eights, three eights, three eights. Sixteenths. One down. I'll explain later. One more. Two. All right, guys, so we're back from Lowe's. Um, I picked up a couple of washers and I actually did a test run of all this. So to come up with a plan for the video. So in the in the previous clips, you saw me grab these three washers. I was going to try these out because um, the stainless washer is thinner than this nylon washer. Um, I kind of like the nylon washer for right now. But this washer here, again, these are all three eighths um, washers. Um, this washer here is what I use on the um, end. To, to hold the two hilts together. So realistically, when you go to Lowe's, after watching this tutorial, all you're gonna need to buy is your washer. And I preferably like these nylon ones. Again, they're thicker, but the O-ring fits in there pretty good. So the uh, nylon one I got here, I'll throw the part number there. And then the stainless one I grabbed out of the bin, I think it was like 48 cents or something like that, you can see in the video. So let's get to the big question that everybody's asking is what length do we have to cut the rod? And uh, that's totally up to you. A lot of guys are using 20 inch, some guys are using 20 and a half. I'm going to 
do a video of putting it together to figure out how long of a um, we're gonna cut so how long of a piece of rod we're gonna cut so let's set that up and get to it okay guys so um, you're gonna have to bear with me my dog is having an anxiety attack upstairs so if you hear her barking it's just her going through her her fit um, so we got the um, hilt on the ground we have one of our end caps we got our washer of choice, depending on what washer you want to use. I'm going to use my nylon one. Actually, one of the guys used a rubber one, and I had the same idea. I thought that was really good. But at Lowe's, I couldn't find one that fits 3 8 I didn't want to drill it. But if you can find one, like, ah, it might have been Gregatron. I forgot who exactly found the rubber um, washer. Grab that, because I think that's the best way to go, because it gives it grip. But, um, so we have our end end plug, end cap, we've got our rod, hilt, washer. So first things first, I want to find the um, depth inside the uh, end plug here, threaded end cap. That's it there. So as you can see, because I did this, I did a trial run yesterday, I mark it with a Sharpie. And now I'm going to put my my, I'm going to start putting my hilts on with my washer spacer and then the other hilt and I'm going to mark here on the end and this will tell me how long everything is together and now I'm going to take all this off why do I explain I should just show it And now if I measure this here, roughly three quarters, and add it to my overall measurement, that's gonna give me the total length, which is 20 and three quarters. So like someone else previously mentioned on the forum, I'm gonna go with 20 and a half or 20 and 3 eighths. That way it will give me just enough room to tighten um, tighten down both end caps. Because if you bottom them out, if you max them out, you're not gonna be able to tighten them all the way. So you want a little bit of extra room in the end cap so you can crank it together. So that's how we find the um, overall length. And I'm going with 20 and 3 eighths. Okay, so we're back in the shed. Remember how on our shopping list I picked up two 3 eighths nuts? So what I'm gonna do is I use those nuts here for where I wanna cut. So when I have the hacksaw lined up. I have something fairly straight to cut on. So I'm going to thread these on there and then report back. Wicked lazy right now. Okay, so we got our line here. Putting the two nuts together. Throw my washer on and then lock it in the vise. Reposition the camera. Okay, so you can do this with a simple hacksaw, and now you have the nut to use as a straight edge guide. It just makes things, you don't need to do it this way, but it just makes things a lot easier when we go to clean up. But um, I don't have time for that, so I'm gonna use a porter band and cut right through this girl. So now, this one thing that I learned is, especially when you have a nut on here, if you crank it this way, if you take it off, it helps 
get the burrs off there so uh, if, it doesn't fix the thread but it helps the thread because sometimes now if you cut it straight and you go to put thread it on you can ruin it but even by using the two nuts as a straight edge it threads on so the next step I'm going to show you is if you don't and it's screwed up we're going to sand it over here on the table sander okay so most importantly guys you're working with metal and we're grinding and cutting and they're worth every penny make sure you wear an eye protection okay so here's our our end you can see she's a little rougher on the edges compared to the factory one so now I'm just gonna go like this and slowly hit it like that I'm gonna give it a whirl there's a little burr on the end there I just took off of my hand Okay, that feels good. Now, one little tap on the face. And she spins on. If you guys are intimidated by this, and you have a power drill, for $9 on Amazon, you can buy this. And it goes into your drill bit, and deburrs the thread for you. So let me see if I can do this on the scrap piece close up. Huh? Okay, so here we are with the other end of the, uh, this is the scrap piece. And I'm having a hard time. You can see I just burnt myself real good. I'm having a hard time threading that on there. So let's try this. Let's see. Here we go works good uh, all you need to do is hit the face to get that burr off there and you're golden so that's uh, another option if you want if you don't if you feel too intimidated by cutting it but as long as you use that two nut trick and keep the um, blade straight it'll be fine so let's go over to the um, basement and finish it up okay so it's o-ring time so five o-rings come in the kit I've already threw one on um, the middle one so we're gonna check our reference on where each o-ring goes and Dan has given me instructions that he uses um, thread or um, very fine um, cable to stretch the o-ring over the hilt because if you look I just burnt my fingertip really good in the shed through this hurts it's very difficult to get these o-rings over just the hilt let alone the buttons so I have some fishing line here. I want to try that. All right, so using Ali's photos for reference, he did a really nice job weathering his up. I'm going to try and get the O-ring over the... Uh... I tried with my thread, and my thread's too weak. It's cheap thread. I got it at Walmart or something a long time ago. Look at that. They weren't kidding. I didn't think this would work. Dan, you're right. It works really freaking good. Here's the real test. Ready? Ooh, I don't know if the fishing line's going to work. You can hear Ruby barking away. I have to apologize for that. Yep. Wow. Wicked. Wicked easy. Wow. The fishing line works. Four pound fishing line. All right, so I'm going to try it the other way. Well, I wonder if this will work, if I could just go over this way with it. Is this how you guys did these ends? Leave a comment in below. Yep, I thought I snapped it. Nope, that works good. All right, so I'm gonna do that for the, the, the rest of them. Actually, I gotta take this one off now. 
All right, I don't know if you need to see me do all those, but that's how you do it with the fishing line. If you have strong uh, sewing thread, that would work. Somebody on the forum did it with a, um, I gotta check my reference, I don't know if that's right. Somebody did it with a, uh, oh no, okay, yeah. With a ribbon, like a, I guess a ribbon from, <laughs> like chicks would wear in their hair. Over that little LED. Come on. Yep. So a little history behind this. Dan was explaining. There wasn't a metal hero in episode one. They made a metal hero. Or metal hilt for Darth Maul. But Ray Park didn't like how small it was. And gave them some ideas on the next one. So they took the hilt, stretched it out, and then risen cast it with the rod in the middle. And then they cut the rod off and that's what they used for the belt hanger. So actually these O-rings went on really, really easy with the fishing line trick. I don't see how you can get them on over these buttons without it because it was a chore yesterday just stretching it over that. So now I think I'm going to have to go back to the floor over there and uh, put this together for the final go. Or is it the final go? I think so. If you happen to miss my unboxing video, I have the um, order to put these in. So I'm just, we'll do it again real quick. On a washer, there is a perfectly flat side and then a beveled side. So I'm going to go with the perfectly flat side down like that. The middle spacer ones, I'm putting both bevels on each side so both sides are smooth. So we start off with one large, two medium, one large, two medium, one large, one medium, one small, one medium, one small, one medium. That's how we do it. I'm going to thread our rod in there. You can still see where the mark is. We'll pull hilt number one down. Actually, I'm going to undo it by two threads. Little washer. I didn't even get this in. Hilt number two, just enough thread out there, and then this is our second end. Can we get this on there without spilling them all? a little bit of work lining up the centers and it's been a big dramatic thing on the forum but in reality it's not the end of the world so. there we go if you just move it around now I cheated, and I'll explain once I'm done, but there is a lot of wiggling and maneuvering you have to do, and I've made it very easy with my cheat mode here, but um, other people, reputable builders on there, just had their wife, significant other, or a kid help them with an extra set of hands pull the center together while you tighten it. So. Hold that there. Oh, I lost it. So now if I go like this. It's getting there. There we 
go. There's the Anakin Star Killer, Darth Maul Hero. And it's heavy. You, um, once you weather the ends, this thing will look like uh, metal. It is bad. Oh, one last thing we have to do is glue the end plugs in. But let's bring it over to the bench and talk about it. Okay, so now with it all lined up and together, the last remaining thing you have to do is glue the two um, steel end caps in. Um, I'm probably going to use E6000 when that comes comes time. You just dab a little bit of E6000 in there and uh, glue it in. You might be able to do some. I'm pretty sure it's steel. If it is steel, you could probably gun blue it a little bit. Oh, it's stuck in there. Okay, I just didn't want to lose that and be stuck. So, um, Dan was wanted me to mention that he's had good luck adding um, brush marks to this by sticking. Before you put the washers on and everything, you take the end cap plug, stick it in the end of a drill truck, and uh, make the machine mark in there, the little brush mark in there. So I might end up doing that later on because I plan on weathering this up. But um, it's it's solid. So I mentioned that I cheated, and what I mean by that is, is a lot of people are, are struggling to line this thing up in the center. So <laughs> what I did was I used a half inch drill bit and laid this down on on some foam and drilled the drill bit up it as far as I could go on each side. That gave enough play in the center so you can wiggle it around even more. It literally took me four minutes aside to fix and I recorded it because I was fooling around with one end. And uh, when I put the one end, the modified end on the non-modified non end, I said, oh, this is easy, this is an easy fix. So I recorded the second time of um, drilling and putting it together. So. Um, I'm going to roll that now. So tonight I got back from Lowe's and I did a shopping list of all the stuff we're going to need. I came back and uh, started putting the stuff together and I saw how it's out of line. And that's when I came up with, I, I struggled um, putting it together with the washer and everything. I still wasn't um, happy with it. So I did one thing and um, I'm really happy with it. So I'm going to do the other one and see if I can get it 100%. So I just bored the hole out. Um, to a half inch uh, drill bit and I'm going very slowly and um, digging right through. I can only go in this much though but it seems that this side has moved over substantially and if I do it to this one I'm pretty sure it will be a hundred percent you'll never know. I'm very happy with it the way it is now but um, I'm gonna put this over here in the cup so I don't scratch anything but it's kind of like I'm I was going to put this together and then if I wasn't happy with it, um, do a like part two of drilling this, but I already drilled one and I didn't have it on film and now I just started doing another one. So I'm going to show you guys how slow I go with this because I don't want this to shatter the, uh, the, uh, hilt. So I'm just holding it real tight here. Everything's good to go. When I started, I started on just a little bit of an angle because the hole's oblonged and I want to move the rod this way over. So. It smells terrible. Risen kills drill bits. This is a steel drill bit. And the Risen kills it. It's incredible. 
how quick it dulls it down. Battery's dying. Oh, dang it. Stinker. Right, I got one more. Full power, baby. Now that the thread is inside, you have to pull it out to remove the material. Okay, that should be enough. Stay tuned. Okay, so everybody who's panicking over this, check it out. All set. Just a little bit of a drill bit and you're good. Uh, I don't want to cut the rod because I'm saving that off for tomorrow, but just that little bit oblongs it enough to put it right there. And you throw the, the O-ring on it and you're never going to know. Easy beans. Now, now see how easy that was? Uh, people on the forum get all anxious and nervous. It's not a big deal. We'll all put our minds together and find out the easiest and most user-friendly way of, of getting it to work. And a half-inch drill bit. I, I think a lot of people have half-inch drill bits. So if you don't have anybody to help you pull this thing in the center, then maybe your option is to do what I did and, and, and drill it. Because I, as you can see, I assemble it by myself here too. But you wouldn't really have to do that if you have an extra set of hands, which, and it's been proven with multiple users on the RPF that they've had their wife, kid, or significant other pull it into place. Um, remember we went to Lowe's and we grabbed an 832 screw and I said, I'll tell you later. So the belt hangers had cover tech wheels on them. And I, I want to thank everybody that was involved in Dan's thread on helping me find cover tech wheels and explaining everything about cover tech wheels to me because I didn't have a clue. So I have a cover tech wheel coming to me and um, I grabbed the 832 cap head screw. I don't even actually, I never call these by the right name. I make up my own, yeah, cap screw, button cap screw. I make up my own name for everything. And uh, I picked up one of these and I'm going to put it on the end of the, um, the double blade lightsaber and call it done. But I don't have that. So you, if you're watching this and you want to add a cover tech wheel to your Anakin Starkiller Darth Maul, you're going to have to follow the link below to the RPF tutorial thread on um, the Anakin Starkiller Maul saber. That's the exclusive that's the exclusive link to the cover tech wheel. I won't be doing a video of it. You have to go to the RPF and, uh, and read the thread there. But um, that pretty much sums it up. The kit is, is phenomenal. I wouldn't expect less from Dan. He goes about... Sorry about that. My phone died. I'm just getting to the point of wrapping this up. So I just wanted to um, say what a fine product Dan has delivered us once again. Uh, it's very, very hefty. It's a very solid hilt. Um, and realistically, there's not too much you have to do. I, you could probably do this in an hour, or less than an hour. Um, cutting the rod, putting the O-rings on, screwing it together, and then gluing the, the end, steel end plugs in, and it's done. Then you can just weather it up. You can use stuff like, these are steel, so you can scrape them up, use super blue, uh, acrylic black wash, anything, anything your heart desires. Um, you really need to check out the project thread that I'll link in below, because um, there's some very talented guys on there doing the ends up real real nice and uh, real real good job so that's something to go look at for ideas and then once my cover tech comes in the mail i'll be doing the tutorial on how to install that and basically everything that we've you've seen in this video my tutorial videos i usually make a backup with a written one in the on the rpf so um again thank you dan for delivering this um I want to thank your family for helping packaging and shipping all these because I got these super quick. And look forward to your next project. Uh, maybe uh, a window? Maybe? Let's see. Fingers crossed.
I hope this tutorial has helped you guys. And if you have any questions, you can reach me on the RPF. Have a good night.